Alrighty, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make this video, and I just I don't want to ruffle a lot of feathers, but at the same time, this stuff needs to be said because there are multiple channels that don't know. Uh, I, I, uh, let, let's just get into it. I, I don't even want to start that way. All right. So just a reminder: we are in the PTS. This is a public test server, and we are testing everything in Season 11, Title Update 17. Now, I've been showing you the new gear set, brand set, uh, named weapons, named items, um, and I've shown you the new exotic. We've even been uh, farming the hell out of the Dark Zone um, to get the new exotics that are coming from the raids and legendaries being the eagle bear ravenous and bighorn now what i haven't talked about yet until now is the introduction of the ninja bike messenger backpack now to show you a visual reference for the ninja bike messenger bag for the division two I can run over here to the expertise station and actually show you the placard, the placeholder for it. So if you go to expertise, go down backpacks, and then you can see it right here, Ninja Bike Messenger Bag. Now there are two slots, obviously they're going to remove this top one and then keep the one with the uh, image attached. But nevertheless, it is coming to the game. Now. This does have a huge uh, stigma surrounding it. We have a lot of people on one side saying it's a game changer. It's going to be meta, man. This is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. New meta. New meta. Oh, meta. Game changer. Ooh. I mean, I, I can't even, I can't count on two hands how many videos I've seen talking about this now is this going to be the new meta is this going to be a game changer really do do these people did they play division one uh quick question did you play the division one do you remember what the ninja bike messenger bag was and is in the division one because i'm telling you right now it's not meta in that game and it's not going to be meta in this game. Game changer? Mm, not really. I mean, all it's going to do is make all of your build combinations a little bit better. I mean, let's see here. Like, as far as, like, PvE builds and PvP builds, it'll make, you know, your tank builds a little bit stronger. It'll make your skill builds a little bit better. But all this is doing is just, you know, raising the baseline of your builds. This is not going to create a brand new king or best in slot or anything like that because we already have a best in slot backpack that does everything under the sun. <clears throat> and I'm wearing it. I mean, I, I've, I've praised this backpack for, it, it feels like years now. The Memento backpack? This thing is a game changer. Because it gives you everything. It gives you the core attributes. It gives you weapon damage and armor. And it gives you armor region. And it gives you skill efficiency. I mean, that's, that's really all you need in this game. Now, as far as the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag, that's a different story. So it will be great for hybrids. When, when you say game changer, it might be game changing as in you'll have different builds. That, those will be changed in the game. So, I mean, I guess technically you could say game-changing because you, you'll be changing some builds. But as far as moving the meta or making a new meta, mm, no, it's not. So, uh, we're going to explain why. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show you Division 1 with a whole bunch of references and builds in Division 1. whole bunch of, you know different examples and then we'll come back to the division two i'll show you some examples what you could do in the division two with it and then we'll get out of here and then you can decide is this a huge 
game changing meta or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know. As far as builds, I love this because now I can make 500 new builds and they'll all be different because the Ninja Bike allows that for, you know, more hybrids to step into the picture. Again, all of your metas, quote unquote metas, your best builds, put them in one hand, right? Now put all your non-metas and all your high-end builds, whatever, in your right hand, okay? Now, the Ninja Pike Messenger Bag is going to raise your right hand just so slightly. But whenever you compare it to your left hand, your left hand's still going to be higher because those metas are still going to be metas. It's not going to do anything to the metas because they are the meta. They are the best in slot, the most powerful, the most tanky, the most skill, whatever. But they're still going to be meta for a reason. The ninja bike is going to help all of those hybrids, all of those struggling brand sets and gear sets, and it will help push them towards the meta. It might close the gap, if you will, a little bit. But in reality, it's not going to hit as hard. It's not going to be as tanky. Now, the only way, and we'll, we'll speculate here in a second after I do the spiel, but there, there's only one way to make the Ninja Bike better than the Memento. And we'll talk about that here in a second. I didn't do the spiel, so here we go. <clears throat> What's going on, YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 PTS video. Now, shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in this PTS video, we are going to discuss the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag, give some examples, show what it can do, what it can't do, and then we'll move on with our life. Now, as far as when is this backpack going to be introduced into the game, um, in the <clears throat> live game, probably Season 11, Title Update 17, like it says. Now, in the PTS, I'm assuming, just guessing here, speculation, I'm just assuming that they will put it in the next phase. Because remember, the developers have stated numerous times that during the PTS, they want to always have at least two phases. That way they can make some tweaks, see where the game's at, and then push it to the live game. So we should, should be getting the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag in phase two of the PTS, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Now... Um, we're going to jump over to the Division 1 and show you what the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag does there because it's the exact same thing it's going to do in this game. They are literally taking the exotic and the talent from the first game and they're putting it into this game. That's all they're doing. So let's jump over there and then we'll come back here. I'll show you a few examples and get you out of here. But, uh, but yeah, let's jump over to the Division 1. And we are in the Division 1. Here we go. And I love being back in the Division 1. Okay, now let's talk about this uh, exotic, shall we? Okay. So the exotic in question is right here. The Ninja Bike Messenger Bag. Now, I have three of them right here just to show you different versions. So here's one with uh, firearms. Here's one with electronics. What I'm trying to show you here is that this backpack would drop random core attribute. So it would either be randomly a firearms, a toughness or stamina, and or a electronics. Or in the Division 2, it would be a skill tier. 
So in the first game, it would have a chance of dropping either as a red, a blue, or a yellow. It didn't matter. It was random. Now, another thing with the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag is it did come with two different attributes as well as a mod slot. So that might come into the Division 2. I'm not sure. But as of, you know, right here in the Division 1, it would be a random core and then two attributes. So you might be able to have like a ninja bike with, I don't know, like a skill tier, but then it has like crit chance, crit damage on it or something like that with a mod slot for the Division 2. All right. So those are the different ways you would get, you know, different attributes with the ninja bike messenger bag. Now, looking at the talent, it's the exact same talent that they're showing in the Division 2. Now, in the Division 2, they actually have a talent name, and it's called Resourceful. But it reads the exact same as this one right here. So, let's read it. Ninja Bike Messenger Bag. Slots in with any equipped gear set item to fulfill a requirement towards unlocking that gear sets bonus you can unlock multiple bonuses simultaneously but you cannot unlock classified gear set bonuses now in the division one that's a problem but in the division two that's not a problem because we don't have any classified gear set bonuses so in the division two this will help both brand sets and gear sets at the same time so let me give you a few instances in the division one okay mm -hmm. so let's say eh, i don't know let me see how many would i put on i would put on two so let's say i do two banshee three predator now this is called a pred she build right pred she banshee and predator yeah a pred she build now the reason it's a pred she build is because you're utilizing both the banshee gear set and the predator gear set with the ninja bike messenger bag this is one of the most famous hybrid builds in the game now looking at it predators mark you would get all of the bonuses and the talent to give them the bleed so you would get reload speed assault rifle damage smg damage and the bleed from predators mark where with the banshee you would get the looted DZ funds, but then also the damage to targets out of cover. And that's what people were using to utilize this and make it a full-on Predshi build. Now, another way you could change this around, let's see if I even have the pieces. I hope I do. Um, here we go. Now, this would be a, it, this would be called a strike she build, okay? A strike she or uh oop, er, hold on let's see here i would have to put on banshee there we go it's hard because i don't have all the pieces right here so then i'll do striker gloves and these are just examples in the division one but as a you know as a commonality you're going to notice that these things are not metas these are just hybrid builds these are the best known hybrid builds so here's another one right here this is the strike she three pieces of striker two pieces of banshee and the ninja bike because if you go to the bonuses you get all of the bonuses and the striker four piece with the damage to targets at a cover with the banshee so that's, you know, another example. And then you can see right here under the gear set bonuses, you can see where it shows the ninja bike and it shows three out of six. But instead of it just being all Banshee, it does highlight there that we are using the ninja bike messenger bag. But all right, so those are some examples in division one. Let's jump back over to division two. I'll show you some examples over there and then we will finish talking about this. All right, let's go. Alrighty, so now that you have seen what this thing does in the Division 1, let's give you some options and examples you could see in the Division 2, okay? So here's just an option, alright? We will visualize that this exotic backpack is the Ninja Bike, and we will add one brand set or gear set bonus 
to whatever it is I am wearing, okay? So starting off with the weapon, we are using a marksman rifle, and you'll see why in just a second. So with the mask, it would be Habsburg Guard. Now with the Ninja Bike Messenger Bag, we would get headshot damage and marksman rifle damage, okay? Going down to the chest piece, we would use the Chain Killer with Perfect Headhunter, and we would also get weapon damage and damage to armor. Hmm. Going down to the holster, Araldi Holdings, so with this one and the Ninja Bike, we would get Marksman Rifle damage and headshot damage. Sounds familiar. And then if we go to the gloves and knee pads, both of them are Hot Shot, which would then give us 30% Marksman Rifle damage, 30% weapon handling, and 30% headshot damage. That is a lot for a sniper. And if you're using it with Headhunter, forget about it. Now, is this going to be meta? Hmm, maybe not. It's going to be really crazy good for a sniper. And this will be a very strong sniper build. But, I mean, I, I don't see everyone and their mom running this. So I don't really think this would be a meta, but it would be one of those great hybrid builds that could compete against the meta. All right, so that's that example. Let's check out our next example. Okay, so in this example, uh, what am I doing here? Okay, hazard protection. <clears throat> so this is a hazard protection build, right? Now remember, the memento is gonna act as the ninja bike. Okay, so for the mask, we would have Seska. We would get crit chance and hazard protection. All right. For the chess piece, we have Uzina. Now, we actually have Uzina for the chess piece and the knee pads. That way, we get total armor, armor on kill, and hazard protection as well. And then we are using two pieces of Eclipse Protocol which would then give us status effects, skill haste, and hazard protection as well. So you get 30% from the Eclipse, another 10% from the Uzina, so now we're at 40. One, or 10% from the Seska, so now we're at 50. You get 10% from your specialization, so now you're at 60% hazard. And then all you would have to do is have four of these five items roll hazard protection on there, and all of a sudden now you're at 100% hazard protection, and then you could still run all reds on one of these items. Not only that, but it opens up your mods, so you don't have to run any sort of resistance mods. You'll be 100% hazard protection, and uh, you can roll crit or headshot or whatever it is you want. Now again, would this be a meta? Mm, I mean, it, it might be. I mean, it could be, right? Maybe. Maybe. But no, it, it wouldn't be. This is just another one of those hybrid builds that would be a competitor towards the meta. Next example. Boop -a -doo. Oops, hold on. Let me put the right one. There we go. Next example is a armor region build. Okay. So again, act as if the memento is the ninja bike. We would have three pieces of foundry and the chest piece, because with the chest piece, you would still be able to get that improved materials, because you would technically have the four piece with the ninja bike. All right. So that would mean we would have four pieces of foundry bulwark. We have one piece of golem, which would then give us status effects and armor region. Let's see. And then we would have one piece of bellstone armory, giving us armor region and armor on kill. So then you have what? You have the 3% armor region, right? From the Foundry, Bellstone, and Golan gear. And then you have the Ninja Bike. Now again, is this gonna be meta? Mm, not at all, it's not. I mean, this isn't even a good armor region build compared to the armor region builds that are already out there. I mean, the Memento alone gives 3% armor region just from the stacks. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's see if I have another example. Oh, yeah, I have a few more examples. All right, next example is a assault rifle crit build, okay? So, again, act as if the memento is the ninja bike. 
we would have two pieces of Negotiator's Dilemma, but with the Ninja Bike, it would act as three, which would then give us 15% crit chance and 20% crit hit damage. All right. Put that up with two pieces of Providence Defense, which would then give us headshot, crit chance, and crit damage. And then one piece of Walker Harris, which would then give us weapon damage and armor damage. So then now you're just going crazy, right? All crit. I mean, just from this one, what was that? 10 chance, 15 damage. So you're getting 25 chance and 35 damage just from these four pieces alone. And then the Walker Harris is giving you base damage and multiplicative with the armor damage. I mean, is this a meta? No, it's not a meta. But this is a very, very strong hybrid. I mean, this would be a good competitor to the meta for sure. For sure. Now, just switching a few things here, and look at this. So now we're just switching a couple things for the crit chance, right? For this one, we're going crit chance and multiplicatives. So then Memento is the ninja bike. We have one piece Umbra for the 15% crit chance. We have one piece Negotiator's Dilemma for the 15% crit chance. That's 30% from two items, okay? We have two pieces of Walker Harris for the weapon damage, armor damage, and health damage. And then we're running one piece of Providence for the headshot and crit chance. So now we're getting 40% crit chance just from the gear items, just from the set bonuses. That's without anything else rolled onto this build. I mean, that alone could get your AR to near max crit chance without specking into anything crit chance. And then you could run all crit damage mods, all headshot. You could run on every piece of gear, crit damage and headshot damage, and then just have everything else crit chance. I mean, that's a good one, but it, again, is it meta? Probably not. It's probably not meta, but this is a great hybrid idea. And then last but not least, let's see here. What was I doing? Oh, this is supposed to be Negotiator's Dilemma. Oh, and of course, I accidentally missed that one with my PTS. You know, this PTS, it, it's, it's buggy and it's a little laggy today. I, I don't know what it is, but it's been the entire day. Not, not just like a couple minutes here and there. It's been the entire day. Now, the cool thing is they give you these caches to where you just get whatever you want from them. All right. And then Negotiator's Dilemma. Do, do, do. Oh, of course. Of course it's not right there. Get rid of all these. I'm sorry that the PTS is doing this. There we go. And then switch the holster. To negotiator's Dilemma. There we go. All right, so in this example, this is yet another uh, assault rifle example. Now check this one out, right? Again, Memento is the ninja bike. So we have an Umbra mask that would give us 15% crit chance. We have Negotiator's Dilemma holster, which would give us 15% crit chance. We have a Heartbreaker pair of gloves giving us 15% AR weapon damage. And then we'll have one piece of Walker Harris giving us weapon damage and armor damage. And then one piece of Providence defense that would give us headshot and crit chance. So all that crit chance and then all that extra weapon damage. Now again, another very strong hybrid build. But will it be... A meta build? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think it would be a great competitor. But just like in Division 1, when you have like Pred She or Strike She or any sort of hybrid, it's a good hybrid build, but it's not a meta build. I mean, sometimes you can try to make hybrids meta, but let's be real. It, they, they, they fall short in one category or another. All right. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I thought, uh, you know, I tried giving you as much examples as I could. So let me know what you think. If you found this video helpful or informative in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.
Peace.